Hello, and welcome to the Flight Readiness Review for Avis and PAR, Virginia Tech's SUAS design team. Over the next 15 minutes, we will introduce you to the team and provide you with a brief overview of our UAS and flight testing to ensure that the craft is mature enough to compete in the 2018 AUVSI SUAS competition. Hello, my name is Manav Gandhi, and I'm a freshman at Virginia Tech. This is my first year on the team, but second year working with UAS Technologies. As the team lead, I was in charge of coordinating all team members' activities, while also ensuring that all flights were taken out in a safe manner. At the flight line, I'll be in charge of operating the ground control station. My name is Robert Fitzgerald. I'm a freshman at Virginia Tech. This is my first year on the team, but second year working with UAS Technologies. As a mechanical sub-team lead, it was my job to make sure that the construction of the craft went smoothly. At the flight line, I will be preparing the craft for flight, as well as serving as a safety officer. My name is Justin Deutsch, I'm a freshman at Virginia Tech. This is my first year working with U.S. Technologies, and my first year on the team. As a software sub-team lead, I'm in charge of testing all algorithms before the implementation onto the craft. At the flight line, I will be in charge of monitoring our connection with the interoperability server, and ensuring that all data is sent to the server properly. Hi, my name is Jacob Rawls. I'm a freshman at Virginia Tech. This is my first year on the team, as well as my first year working with UAS Technologies. As head of the CAD and simulation sub-team, I'm in charge of making sure all the renderings and simulations are accurate. On the flight line, I'll be inspecting the GPS stands and the water bottle drop mechanism. My name is Michael Snellings, uh, and this is my first year on the team and with UAS Technologies. As electrical sub-team head, it is my job to ensure that all connections are secure and isolated from the airframe. At the flight line, it is my job to ensure that the batteries are fully charged and secured to the aircraft. Hi, my name is Casey Hall and I'm a freshman at Virginia Tech. This is my first year on the design team, as well as my first year working with autonomous systems. My role on the team is the head of the marketing and outreach team, where I work to achieve funding and recruit new members, as well as a member of the mechanical sub-team, where I work to build and test the craft. On the flight line, I will be working in an assisting role to make sure that the craft is ready for flight and that everything is safe and secure. My name is John Orvillio and I'm a junior at Virginia Tech. Though this is my first year on the team, I've been working with UAS Technologies for about two years. I'm the designated team safety pilot and I'm in charge of manually operating the craft from the flight line if needed. Hello, my name is Justin Metzger and I'm currently a sophomore here at Virginia Tech studying mechanical engineering. This is my first year with the team as well as UAS Technologies. Since I'm the 3D printing specialist, I'm not only in charge of 3D printing the components, but also assessing the quality before they're put on the craft. Finally, at the flight line, I am in charge of operating the antenna tracker to ensure high quality communications throughout the event. My name is Chair Matamiro and I am a sophomore at Virginia Tech. I am new to UAS Technologies and this is my first year on the team. As a member of the mechanical sub-team, I helped build the craft as well as the prototypes. At the flight line, I'll be in charge of keeping a visual on the craft as well as uh, reporting any unforeseen actions to the team. Oh, my name is William Ogle. Um, this is my first year here at the SUS design team. I'm on the electrical sub-team and I'm a freshman here at Virginia Tech. Um, throughout the a build phase, I help start the power distribution board and at the competition I'll be in charge of making sure the batteries are ready and secured to the drum. Introducing Troquilidae, a custom multi-copter that was designed and developed by Avis and Par for the 2018 AUVSI SUAS competition. Troquilidae is a fully autonomous octocopter that is capable of waypoint navigation obstacle avoidance, object detection, localization, classification, and air delivery. The airframe is composed of eight arms, four center plates, and three landing legs. In order to reduce weight and maximize strength, all segments are composed of carbon fiber and aluminum parts. When in competition configuration, Trachilidae weighs in at approximately 10.83 kilograms and measures just under 1100 millimeters in diameter. Trochilidae's electrical system was designed around the idea of simplicity and redundancy. With the ability to fly in the event of a single battery failure, motor failure, or autopilot failure, 
Avis and Par is certain that Troquilidae will be able to safely attempt all competition elements no matter the weather conditions. Troquilidae's base autopilot system consists of a Pixoc 2.1 and two HEAR GPS modules. One paired with the Pixoc 2.1's triple IMUs, the two GPS modules outfit Torquilidae with a fully redundant autopilot system. With power and voltage data from the batteries, Torquilidae is able to recognize and react to any power failures in a timely manner. The autopilot system communicates to the ground via two communication pipelines, 900 MHz and 2.4 GHz. The 900 MHz bandwidth is used to connect Torquilidae to the ground control station with transmission planner and all avoidance algorithms, while the 2.4 GHz is used to relay communication between the safety pilot and the craft. The propulsion system is composed of eight 400 kV motors paired with 1660 carbon fiber propellers, which, at max throttle, provide Troquilidae with 13 kg of thrust and a thrust-to-weight ratio of 2.8 to 1. This gives Troquilidae the ability to quickly maneuver around obstacles at a max horizontal speed of 30 knots, powered by a 25.2 volt 6S 44 amp hour LiPo battery, Troquilidae is able to travel a max distance of 11.43 kilometers before being forced to land. Troquilidae's payload bay is composed of a payload delivery mechanism and an onboard imaging system. The delivery mechanism is 3D printed and uses a servo to release the payload when commanded. The onboard camera is a Hawkeye Firefly A8S 4K action camera that is stabilized by a two-axis gimbal. Along with minimizing motion blur, the gimbal is also used to direct the camera's field of view when trying to detect the off-axis target. Through multiple hours of flight testing, Avis and Power has verified that all systems upon Troquilidae are able to reliably perform their respective tasks. In the following section, we will describe an overview of what is expected of Troquilidae during the mission demonstration. All aspects of autonomous flight Takeoff, landing, and waypoint navigation will be attempted with high confidence. Stationary obstacle avoidance will be attempted with medium confidence, while moving obstacle avoidance will be attempted with low confidence. Most aspects of the object detection and localization classification task will be manually attempted with medium confidence, while the emergent and off to axis targets will be attempted with low confidence. Air delivery will be attempted with high confidence. In order to mitigate the chance of a problem arising mid-flight, the team utilized multiple developmental testing procedures. During the season, the team followed a three-step testing procedure known as SII, or Simulate, Individualize, Then Implement. The team began the testing phase by conducting simulations on the airframe and propulsion system while amperage and thrust data from propeller testing was also recorded. This was beneficial to the team as it verified the frame structural integrity and the craft thrust to weight before its first flight. Before being uploaded to the UAS, custom algorithms such as the one used for obstacle avoidance were individualized and simulated through an SITL environment. This allowed the team to test the algorithm against any edge cases without putting the UAV in danger of a crash. After passing the first two stages, the algorithm or component was then verified to be implemented onto the UAS. During the flight test of all newly implemented components, the team ensured flight safety by implementing many fail-safes and backup protocols. In order to assure that Trochilidae is able to perform its autonomous functions reliably, Awas Impar has conducted 10 test flights with the system in competition configuration. The first flights were used to tune Trochilidae's PIDs by using rapid in-flight movements of different aggression levels. After being tuned, Trachilidae spent an additional 200 minutes in the air, 90% of which were in fully autonomous flight mode. Trachilidae has flown a total of 8 flights with autonomous waypoint navigation activated. This accounts to 160 minutes of flight where Trachilidae has attempted 50 waypoints, hit 49 waypoints, and has an average waypoint miss error of 3 feet. Through testing, the team found that making the waypoint smaller than 3 feet would cause Trachilidae to retry a waypoint endlessly, affecting its ability to move onto the next waypoint. 
As per obstacle avoidance, Trochilidae has flown two autonomous flights with the obstacle avoidance algorithm activated. Of the ten stationary obstacles tested against, nine were avoided. As of the recording of this FRR, Trochilidae has not been tested against any moving obstacles in the real world. However, in simulation we have found that of the 20 moving obstacles tested against, their algorithm was able to calculate an avoidance path for five of them. In order to ensure high quality images during flight, the team has chosen to use an action camera that is capable of 4K imagery. Because all detection, classification, and localization algorithms require the camera to be pointed directly at the ground, a two-axis gimbal was added into the imaging system. By monitoring performance of the imaging system throughout multiple attachment methods, the team found that a thin layer of high-intensity gel would prove advantageous in motion blur reduction. At the optimal flying altitude of 150 feet, the system is able to produce an image quality of 2 pixels per square inch. By manually parsing through all of the images, the team is able to achieve high accuracy in its detection and classification of objects. Throughout testing, the team has become increasingly faster and better at detecting and classifying the objects. Of the 30 objects that were tested against, the team was able to accurately detect 29 with no false positives produced. When it comes to object classification, the team was able to achieve the following results. Object shape, 28 out of 29. Object color, 29 out of 29. Object orientation, 27 out of 29. Alphanumeric, 28 out of 29. Alphanumeric color, 28 out of 29. In an attempt to increase localization accuracy and reduce the need for manual geotagging, an autonomous localization algorithm was created by the team. In order to maintain high precision, location data from Trachylidae is logged by the algorithm at a minimum rate of 5 Hz. When tested against the 29 manually detected objects, the algorithm was able to localize the targets with an average deviation of 20 feet. The air delivery mechanism system upon Trachylidae has been tested in numerous flights and weather conditions. These tests were conducted by having Trachylidae fly to a predetermined waypoint, hover over a drop location at an above ground level altitude of 100 feet, and release an 8 ounce water bottle. The results of the 12 attempted deliveries show that the payload explodes 100% of the time and impacts the ground at an average distance of 5 feet from the target. The team conducted a total of 3 full mission tests with the craft and competition configuration. Through these tests, the team was able to ensure that all failed saves and algorithms were operating as predicted. During the second mission test, the team lost their 915 MHz connection with the craft when it was 2,000 feet away and it was thus forced to RTL. After further investigation upon the communication system, the team found that they were not running the RFD 900 modules at the max power allowed. After performing the necessary changes, the team was able to observe noticeable connection improvements during the third mission test. During the first three mission tests, the team scored 68.25%, 59.05%, and 71.52% respectively. The low score in the second mission test was caused by the loss of communication and the decision to end the mission prematurely. By averaging more than 95% in the autonomous flight and air delivery tasks, the team was able to prove that Trachylidae is reliable in completing the primary objectives set forth in the beginning of the season. During the mission demonstration, we plan to score better than or equal to our average mission testing score of 66.27%. As a team, we would like to thank AEVSI for hosting the SEOAS competition and look forward to competing in June.